You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Derry here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you to the Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, the last place we left off, we had just uh, uh, gotten through that traumatizing part where I had to get stabbed in order for it to look like I was they, they had taken me in when I was near death. And I woke up with some nightmares, thought it was a shadowy figure in the room. Turns out it's just Rannick. So, alright guys, let's jump right back into it. Please sit back and enjoy and let me entertain you for like the next 20 minutes. And let's get into it. There we go. Alright, start alarm chan. Here we go. Alright, let's do it. Mm. His voice draws from me an involuntary smile as I tear up seeing his muzzle and raising my arms to embrace him. Fuck, you're burning up again. He mutters as the, words, as the world tilts and I'm floating again. I look at him with confusion before I realize that I'm actually in his arms. I try to reach his muzzle, but my hand gives up halfway through, so I just lean my head into his breast, taking in the scent of, his, in the, taking in the, scent of the forest. He carries me back to the bed, resting me gently on the padding. I see his worried expression as he puffs up my pillow. You don't seem good. He reaches for something underneath the bed. I can hear slushing of water after a moment, and after a moment he places a damp cloth on my forehead. Did, did you? I want to ask if he sat on that chest all this time, but I only rasp painfully and he pushes his finger towards my lips. Shh. He stands up and walks towards the cupboard, pouring water into a cup. I sigh in relief, seeing that the wolf reads me like an open book. I couldn't ask for a better caregiver. He sits next to me, bringing the cup towards my lips. I strain to lift my head up, clutching onto the cup as the wolf tilts it, and I thirstily swallow one deep gulp after another. Once I had my fill, I exhale with satisfaction, looking at him with a grateful smile, but he looks back at me with deep concern. You have a fever. Yeah. Finally, my voice sounds as it should. I instinctively reach out to the dressing donning my side. Does it hurt? Less than I thought it would. More than I would like. Let me have a look. He brushes my hand away, looking carefully at the bandages. I furrow my brow as I see him bringing his muzzle closer, wet woven nose twitching as he takes a few deep sniffs. No fresh blood. He sighs with obvious relief, returning to my face, returning to face me. What was that? I was worried you might have opened it when you fell. Why did you do that? I thought I saw something. I don't want to tell him I, I don't want him to tell him I confused him for a demon. Not when it is obvious. He was sitting there keeping vigil over me. I've implied being terrified of him way too many times and his fare towards the mail. I can see a wooden bowl on the floor, filled with water and a soaked cloth. He was cooling me down throughout the day. You're such a good wolf. I say absent mindedly, causing him to smile. His tail is swishing against the bed, and I'm glad I managed to make him feel good about himself. I feel my mind clearing up a little from the delirium, however it makes only however it makes me only more aware how burning up I am. What time is it? Renate looks towards the window, going silent for a moment, clearly seeking something in the night sky outside. I'd say past midnight. Was I out all this time? For the most part. What do you mean? You did mumble from time to time. What did I say? He pauses, looking at me slightly troubled. I couldn't understand. It was in a different language. Huh. Sounded like nothing I've ever heard. I tried to think if I had dreamt about anything, but my mind is empty. There's nothing there for me to remember, aside from this ever-present feeling of dread in the recesses of my consciousness. A random shiver rocks my body and my, teeth and my teeth clatter loudly. I'm really cold. I brought all I have. He points apologetically to the thick bundle of blankets covering me, which I immediately recognize as the ones he used to sleep on in the other room. Those are from your bedding, I say troubled. And your cloak. I touch the green cape sandwiched between two other blankets. It's fine. You need them more than I do. You were sleeping on the chest. It's more comfortable than the floor, that's for sure. Oh, my nose. It itches. God, I hate itchy nose. He grins and I can't help but feel bad. 
I gazed at the oversized bed around me. In truth, there looked more like a doll in it rather than an actual person. My eyes ventured back to the wolf. I don't want him to sleep on the floor or the chest. He's already done so much for me. It doesn't feel right. But this is the only bed I feel even without the... But this is the only bed, and I feel even without the fever, Rannock would, would object to me sleeping elsewhere unless... I almost dismissed the thought before I realized it actually makes sense. It would solve both our problems. I'd be warmer and he wouldn't be sleeping rough. I just need to try not to think about how awkward what I'm about to ask, ask of him is. I muster up my courage. Would you... sleep with me? I stumble on the words, realizing how they came across. Thankfully, Rennick only responds when amused. Huh? The bed is large enough for the both of us, and I would be much, much warmer. Despite the fever burning me up, I can feel the hot flush on my face. You sure about this? He asks, lowering his head to lock his gaze with mine. I mean, only if you wouldn't mind. Normally, I would refuse. He says almost almost indifferently, which causes my heart to sink. I might have miscalculated. On the count of you being sweaty and all, but then again... He bites his lip teasingly, perking one fang out. He's messing with me again. We wouldn't want you getting more ill, now would we? What? I blink in confusion, to which he only smirks. Or is it just an excuse get, to get into bed with me? I blink again. Absolutely thrown off by his tease. You dick, I was stabbed! I poke his shoulder jokingly. Well, you seem to be feeling better. Okay, forget that I asked. I huff in feigned annoyance. Hey now! <clears throat> so, oh, Rannick, your voice has gotten so much lighter. <laughs> Must be huffing them balloons. Hey now! You're an all star, get your game on, go play. Okay, mm. His expression is still slightly mocking, but I can see his ears lower in deference. I was only joking. Well, I wasn't. Now you can sleep on the floor for all I care. I scoff teasingly and look away. Rannick tries to lean into my field of vision, but I only turn further away, causing him to eventually click his tongue. Nice. I guess that's only fair. Oh, God! He stands up and plays himself lazily on the wooden panels in front of me. I cannot help but laugh at his antics and roll my eyes. Ugh, you're so annoying. He doesn't move, laying flat on the floor and ignoring me. Eventually, I pat the bed with my hand. His ears switch at the sound, and he finally looks back at me. Does that mean I can get my bed back? He teasingly emphasizes his ownership, which makes me chuckle even more. Yes. I concede through a sigh. In a split second, the wolf leaps to his feet through a spectacular backflip, followed by a dive in onto the bed itself, making the mattress jump. I laugh, concealing my amazement at how acrobatic this beast really is. He lays flat at my feet, just idly kicking his hind paws up and down, softly swag his tail softly wagging in, in content. I missed you, baby. He croons to his bed. Although it's clearly a joke, I feel even guiltier for not suggesting sharing the bed earlier. You're not going to sleep that like that, though, are you? I look at him as his head hangs on one side of the bed while his legs dangle from the other. Yeah, you're right. was going to double as a blanket, but I think I might crush you now. He takes a deep breath and, and readjusts his position, laying himself down next to me. It got quite awkward, as I tried not to look at him. I don't think I've shared a bed with a guy before. At least, not like this. I almost scoot further away from him, creating a bit more space between us. I thought you wanted me to warm you up. He mutters with a risen brow. I did. I swallow heavily, realizing I didn't quite think this through. What I essentially suggested was a snuggling, which in retrospect is very, very weird. Well, aren't you cold? He looks at my arms with quite focused gaze, causing me to do the same. I am trembling, but at this point I cannot tell if it's my embarrassment or the fever. Here. He extends his paw towards me, grabbing my shoulders and effectively pulling me into an embrace, solving my dilemma for me. I'm so thankful for the fever, as this way at least my embarrassment is masked. You cannot have a blush if you're burning up already. But my fluster quickly melts away, just as I melt into his arms. I allow my head to rest on his upper arm, gazing up at his fluffy chin. He's kind enough to not look at me, instead locking his gaze into the wall behind me, making this whole experience a bit less intense. 
I rest like this for a little, for a moment, almost dozing off as my mind spins violently. I don't know if it's because of his fur or if my fever took a dip, but suddenly, I feel really hot. You're really burning up. He rubs the sweat off my forehead with his paw, and I just feel extremely embarrassed. I don't like that he sees me this way, all wet and with streaky hair. I can see that my sweat that my sweat clumped his fur together, and it's not how I'd imagined my first time with a guy in bed to go down. I almost laugh at how stupid my train of thought is. Perhaps I should fetch Verissa, he says in a worried tone, and I immediately look up to him. No, don't. Orion. What reason could you possibly have to fetch her at night? Others would suspect something's wrong. Something is wrong. He almost growls at me, but quickly cools himself down. I'm worried about you. If you go for her, we'll be found out. I don't care. He interrupts me with a stern gaze. You shouldn't have been stabbed in the first place. If we're found out, all this would have been for nothing. This doesn't feel right, Orion. It's okay. I reach up to his muzzle, petting his cheek fluff. He closes his eyes, resting his snout freely under my palm. It's not like I've done this before, but I feel like this is a pretty correct body re re uh, this is a correct body reaction to being stabbed. I say jokingly, trying to put him at ease. He still doesn't open his eyes, clearly avoiding looking at me. I'm tougher than you think. I try to reassure him, to which a very faint pleading whine escapes his muzzle, quite characteristic for a canine. You're such a dog. I smile in amusement, causing him to look at me with confusion. What's that supposed to mean? He sounds almost offended. Nothing. I shake my head. Despite the fever rocking my entire body, I feel quite wonderful just being this close to him. At first it seemed all odd and almost wrong to get so intimate with what is pretty much a beast man. But now? Now that I'm resting in his gentle embrace, nothing could feel more right. I snuggle myself closer, almost burrowing my nose into his chest fluff. Com mm. Comfortable. Mm-hmm. I croon, just taking in his scent. It almost feels like I'm laying in a meadow, with Rennick's breath and imitating a warm breeze. I'm so comfortable that I don't even notice the rare tremors going through my body every now and then. You're still shivering, he says sleepily as he tries to steady me with his other paw. It's fine. I respond, just enjoying his, his warm hold. I'm perfect. I, re I adjust my head on his muscle. Never would I have guessed that a bicep could make for such a comfy pillow. It gives great support, while still being soft enough. Not to mention the fur, which just makes, which just makes it all, the m all this much cozier. I don't know how long we lay like this. Time ceases to matter as I simply enjoy the moment until I feel something blunt pressing against my stomach. Just below the navel. I pull my head away from his chest, looking down at a visibly expanding bulge between his legs. Despite the pants, I could clearly see the outline of his wolf hood. Um... I mutter, looking at his muzzle with conflicted expression, but he seems fast asleep. I can swear I see his eyes move beneath the eyelids, and his soft snoring sounds almost like as if he's faking it. But I decide not to press the issue. He's faking it. I mean, do I really want to have this awkward conversation? Perhaps he just can't help it, like sort of night version of the morning would. Better leave this forgotten and unspoken, even though it does feel almost flattering. I nestle my head back into his biceps, feeling his breath again and brush my forehead and doing everything I can to ignore his hard-on pushing against my underbelly. I lay like this for some time, struggling to fall asleep between occasional shivers and cold sweats, but the calm rhythm of, exp of his expanding chest sways me back and forth, as if I were in a furry cradle. It slowly lulls me, and eventually I manage to doze off. Hmm. Oh boy, what a position to sleep in. Hmm. I wake up feeling almost glued to the damp bedding and covered in wet fur, my face smothered deep inside of Rannock's waterlogged neck fluff. It's clearly day as the entire room is flooded with bright light. There's not a dry spot on my entire body. I feel as if I took a bath and simply forgot to dry off. I want to push away only to realize that Rannick has rolled over onto me during the night and I am half crushed beneath him. I try to wriggle myself out, but it's pointless. His massive arm and leg wrap around me, holding me securely in place, while his torso simply pushes me deeper into the bed. He must weigh a fucking ton! But it's not what I actually but it's not that I, but it's not what I actually mind. Being beneath him like this is almost nice if not for my glistening skin and the ever present sogginess. 
I think that even without my fever, I would have been drenched in sweat. And sleeping like this is pretty much akin to going to bed in a freaking fur coat. Huh. I actually notice my fever is gone. I look to the still sleeping wolf. His soft snoring makes me reluctant from waking up, from waking him up. But he doesn't react to my gentle nudges, and I start to feel a little bit claustrophobic. I rub my eyes of the excess moisture, only to grimace at the scent. Ugh, I smell like dog breath. I quickly sniff my hands, realizing it's saliva. Rannick has been drooling right on my forehead during the night. It's the push I need to shake off his charm and finally elbow him into one of his ribs. Huh? <laughs> what? He snorts, raising up his head and finally allowing me to breathe freely. I take a deep gasp, enjoying fresh, enjoying fresh air free of our joint musk. Suddenly I freeze up, feeling as the male grinds softly against me, his actual morning wood pressing rhythmically into my groin. What the fu- I look up at him wide-eyed. He's still half asleep, pulling me tighter underneath him, striding me like one would straddle a crumpled up duvet. He yawns, opening up his massive jaw, tongue dangling out in a goofy fashion. I feel as his entire body tenses up, all the muscles tightening around me in a groggy stretch. His flexing makes me blush hard as I feel his powerful form grind against my tiny body. Rannick! Hmm? Another stab into my groin, this time his wolf hood poking right into my balls. Rannick! Huh? He pushes, up, he pushes up with his paws, looking down at me, flanked between him, between them. Orion! He blinks, allowing himself one final absent-minded thrust, causing me to wince in complete humiliation. Fuck! The wolf jumps off the bed, stumbling onto the floor and landing on his rump with a loud thud. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry! Awkward. He yelps, quickly covering a clear erection with his paws. I don't even move, feeling as if I were trying to avoid a T-Rex. If I don't move, maybe he'll just go away. Fuck, I don't want to talk about this. I don't even want to acknowledge this. Oh no. Only now I register the tingling the tingling in my groin and how tight my thorn cloth got. I'm hard as well. I roll over onto my belly, hiding my face into the wet pillow. Why is this happening? Ow, um... I can hear him struggle to vocalize as he sneaks towards the door. I'll be in the other room. The doors creak and then I hear them shut. Fuck! I might have lost my memory, but I never... But I know I have never been so mortified in my life. Not only we got away... Not only we got way too intimate, I'm basically all wet and stinking. What a horrible first impression to make. You don't share a bed with a hot stranger when ill. Wait, hot? What the fuck am I even thinking? What is wrong with me? I slam my head repeatedly into the pillow, causing wet slapping sounds which immediately make me cringe. That's not what it sounds like! There's a screech of wood accompanied by clatter of falling objects coming from the next room. Oh shit, that made me, that made me jump a little. It almost sounds as if Rannick flipped the table over, the thought making me flinch a bit. You okay? Fine. He shouts out immediately, a hint of anger clear in his voice. I can hear him hastily readjust whatever it was that he tipped, that he tripped over. Uh, I'll go get water. <laughs> he mutters and leaves the house in a hurry. I smile reluctantly, taking some comfort in the fact he's as much embarrassed by this as I am. On the subject of water, I really do need to figure out a way to wash myself properly. I reek. Whatever was going on with me throughout the night, my body burned it off like a supernova. I decide to get out of the waterlogged bed and take a stretch. Oddly enough, I feel quite well. I even touch my side, rubbing and pushing against it, trying to ascertain if I'm healing well. There's not much pain, maybe a little discomfort, but that's about it. I guess Vool really knew what he was doing. But if the plan hinges on me being gravely wounded, I think I'll have to spice it up a bit. I mean, I might have a wound now, but I still need to sell it as something serious, as it certainly doesn't feel like it. I really hope it won't leave a nasty scar, though. Worst case scenario, I'll have, fa I'll have something to remember this, advent this misadventure by. The wolf returns to the cabin, and I struggle for a while to face him, but eventually I open the doors separating the rooms. He sits slumped in a chair, looking spooked at me, almost as if surprised to see me at all. I can see his ears go red as they fold back in discomfort. I'm so taken by his reaction that I completely ignore the fact how flustered I must look myself, my face burning and my mind desperately wanting to just run away and hide. But we cannot let something as stupid as this get in the way of what's important. As far as I understand, today is the day I'm finally introduced to the tribe, and as much as I trust that, Van that Varissa knows what she's doing, 
it's still going to be a bit of a gamble. I don't want my potential last moment with Rannick to be this awkwardness. H hey, I speak up through a smile. I want him to know everything's fine between us. I mean, he was sleeping after all. No foul. At least, not the way I look at it. But Rannick turns his gaze away, his muzzle twisting down in a troubled expression, eyes shut tight in discomfort. I approach him slowly, placing my hand on his furry shoulder. Want some breakfast? I'm sorry. He interrupts me, brushing off my hand and avoiding eye contact. You must feel pretty disgusted. Me? I'm basically drenched you in my sweat. If anyone should be disgusted... You know what I mean. He looks at me sternly and I cut the act. I do, but I don't mind. And we're going to leave it right there. That seems like the perfect place to leave it. Thank you, Alarm Chain. Your timing is, once more, as always, quite impeccable. But anyway, guys, this has been a new episode of Far Beyond the World. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!